in the action RPG Gotham Knights, Nightwing, Robin, Batgirl, and Red Hood team up to defend Gotham City with the help of a second player. Each playable protagonist has their own attacks, gadgets, and ways to move around, which makes for different ways to play in both single player and co op modes. Gotham Knights is its own IP, but it will be interesting to see how it compares to the Batman Arkham games that came before it. For example, it will be interesting to see how much the combat in Gotham Knights will be improved and changed. This and more is in the video for today. Batman Arkham games ground takedowns usually lead to a crotch punch. Takedowns on the ground are very important in the Batman Arkham games because they kill enemies who would otherwise get back up. The enemies fall over pretty quickly, but you have to be careful about when you do a ground takedown because an enemy's attack can stop the animation in the middle of it. This ground takedown animation is different in Batman Arkham City, Batman Arkham Origins, and Batman Arkham Knight, but it is the same in Batman Arkham Asylum and Batman Arkham City. In the first game and the game that came after it, Batman flips into the air and lands on a downed bad guy, then hits them with a strike. But depending on which way Batman is facing when he lands, he can punch the bad guy in the face, the back, or the crotch. In the Batman Arkham series, this leads to some unintentionally funny scenes, like when Batman ends a fight with a loud punch to a bad guy's groin. There are other ways to kill enemies, like using combos or special gadgets, but ground takedowns are simple, effective, and sometimes even funny. Batman Arkham Origins and Batman Arkham Knight may have changed the animations to prevent this from happening again. However, Batman Arkham Knight has an acrobatic downward strike that can sometimes hit a thug in the stomach or pelvic area. Well, the fact that Gotham Knights doesn't have a lot of free flow may be good for it. From what we've seen of Gotham Knights gameplay so far, it's safe to say that it won't have any takedowns on the ground at all. This is probably a design choice meant to keep enemies on their feet as long as possible so that other attacks like grabs and taking them down with the environment can work on them. Much more than in Batman Arkham games, players can use the environment to their advantage. For example, they can run along the sides of trucks or do a takedown near an environmental shape, likely when they have built up enough meter. The only thing in Batman Arkham games that is as common as ground takedowns is the parry counter, which is also not available in Gotham Knights. Instead, each player will be able to do a perfect dodge and a perfect counter after that. Some fans may already be happy that combat in Gotham Knights is different from how it is shown in the Arkhamverse. This is because they are two different IPs. Some fans may be excited about the RPG elements that Gotham Knights adds to its open world, and it will be interesting to see how important suit choices and gadget upgrades are in basic combat for each of the playable protagonists. Because Gotham Knights is an open world game with a lot of features, it's unlikely that it won't have any wonky animations or weird bugs, but at least it might not have to worry about having a lot of crotch punches. Next, should Batman be playable after he has been unlocked? Batman is going to have a big impact on WB Games Montreal's Gotham Knights, especially because his supposed death is supposed to inspire and change Nightwing, Robin, Batgirl, and Red Hood. With the possible exception of Red Hood, everyone in the Gotham Knights Bat family is very well known and doesn't need to be told who they are. It's clear that WB Games Montreal wants to highlight these characters in particular, but it's also possible that it has some surprises up its sleeve that fans won't find out about until they play Gotham Knights. Since Gotham Knights was announced, its marketing has been a bit all over the place. Early on, the Court of Owls was given a lot of attention and a mysterious tone. Now, all of its marketing is focused on showing off the main characters you can play as in Gotham Knights. These characters are highlighted in spotlight trailers that show new ways to play and look for each character. There's a good chance that the game's story won't have any surprises that let you play as a new character, but you can make a case for or against Batman becoming a playable character at some point in Gotham Knights. Then, some theories say that Batman might still be alive in Gotham Knights. In the cinematic reveal for Gotham Knights, Bruce Wayne said goodbye to the rest of the Bat family. In it, Bruce said that he knew he was going to die and that he had left the Belfry open so that Nightwing, Robin, Batgirl, and Red Hood could use it as a base of operations. Since then, more talk has led to people to think that Bruce knew what would happen to him and may have tried to avoid it, or that his death was faked to hide him from the public for some reason. Fans think that Bruce is being held captive by the Court of Owls, who may then brainwash him and turn him into a talent assassin that players will have to fight as the final boss. Each of these theories makes sense on its own, and any of them could be right. If that's the case, Bruce's survival would change the way the story goes in some pretty big ways. Bruce's death only has a shred of truth to it because Police Commissioner Jim Gordon is also dead. This gives Barbara Gordon's backstory more weight and gives her even more reason to protect Gotham as Batgirl. Bruce's death makes less sense than Jim's does because it doesn't change how you play in an open world Gotham City. Jim's death does, so Gotham Knights can explain why the Bat family might not get the same support or vindication as usual since Jim, the only authority figure who usually respected 
and appreciated the Bat family's help, is dead. But even if Batman is really dead, there is still a chance the Gotham Knights will use him in some way. After beating Gotham Knights, players might be surprised to unlock Batman. If the theory that Bruce is the final boss Talon and that the Bat family helps save and heal him afterwards, it's possible that fans will be able to play as him once they beat the story in Gotham Knights. This would work in some ways and not work in other ways. For example, if Batman could be unlocked, he wouldn't be able to join other characters on scripted missions with cutscenes that can be shared. Even if there is a new game plus mode, Batman couldn't be in it because the main story would still say that Bruce from Gotham Knights is dead, and Bruce would show up in cutscenes in a funny way. Batman could only be unlocked and played if he was limited to challenge maps or post-game content in the same save file, which could feel boring and restrictive. At that point, it wouldn't be clear if it was worth it to make Batman a playable character at all, even if Bruce turns out to be alive for the whole of Gotham Knights. Gotham Knights could get more cosmetic skins in the future. For example, Barbara could get new skins that make her look like Samantha Brown or Kate Kane, and Batman could also get new skins. But Batman would probably need his own moves and skills that are different from those of the game's other characters, so he would have to be added in a different way. In Gotham Knights, Batman could really be dead, and maybe he should stay that way. If Bruce is kept alive in Gotham Knights, either as an unlockable character or so that his character can be used in the future of the IP, it could hurt the game more than help it. Fans would be thrilled to play as Batman again since Batman Arkham Knight and the idea that Batman and any other Bat Family character could fight crime as a dynamic duo may be too good an opportunity for WB Games Montreal to pass up. But if WB Games Montreal wants Gotham Knights to stand out from the rest of the Arkhamverse, it might be best for the game to stick to its established Bat Family and leave Batman out of the picture. Not only would putting Batman in the game make strange contradictions that would have to be ignored for the main story to make sense, but it would also put him in the middle of a game that didn't need him in the first place. It would be interesting to visit Bruce's Batcave and see other things that belong to him. Talking to Alfred might also help put their relationship into perspective, but Bruce staying dead would honor the Bat family's teamwork and let them grow on their own. By the end of the game, it would be nice to see Nightwing, Robin, Batgirl, and Red Hood come out of Batman's shadow in a way that shows respect for him as a guardian mentor but lets them define themselves without being tied to his guidance. Well guys, hope you are excited about the new game. I also hope you enjoyed this video. Like and follow for more amazing content. Till next time, cheers!